Hey, this is Dan Grissom at technicallysocial.io. I'm also an assistant professor at Azusa Pacific University in Southern California. I teach computer science there in the Department of Engineering and Computer Science. So uh, today in this video uh, tutorial, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to get a basic WordPress site like ours, technicallysocial.io, up and running very, very quickly. So a few weeks ago over on the Technically Social blog, uh, I posted about uh, a blog called Websites 102, Let's Talk WordPress Plus CMS. So in this series, in the 101 version, uh, Word, uh, Website 101, we talked about some of the, the website builders, such as Wix and, and uh, Squarespace and things like that. Um, so in this particular uh, in this particular blog, we were really starting to talk about what you get and the differences between content management systems, uh, WordPress being the most popular, and some of these website builders. Um, so towards the end, uh, I basically uh, talked about how some of the, one of the biggest problems that people run into is they're a little bit afraid about the extra work that goes into creating a WordPress in terms of having to do some of the nuts and bolts behind the scenes technical stuff on your own. So in this tutorial, uh, we're basically going to show you that it's actually not that scary if you uh, know what you're doing or at least have a good tutorial to walk you through the process. Okay, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do this in about four or five minutes, maybe five or six minutes from uh, where we're starting right now. So the basic steps we're gonna go through are down here at the bottom. Um, and, and essentially what we need to do is uh, we need to purchase a domain name and then also purchase a hosting plan and then basically kind of connect those together. And I'll kind of walk you through that as we go. And then finally we'll install a WordPress theme such as DB, which is one of the most popular uh, themes. So we're into about two minutes already, so uh, set your timers, here we go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is purchase a domain name. Okay, there's a number of places to do that. My personal favorite is namecheap.com. You can check out some of the others uh, right here, and there's a, a multitude of others as well. Um, here's their, their home page. I'm already logged in just to kind of speed up the process and to kind of get my credentials up and running. Once you log in, you'll see something like this. Now I already have a few uh, website domains purchased, but generally what you're going to do is you're going to go to the domain name search and you're going to type in some domain name. So for us, we're going to type in maritzagrissom.com. So Maritza actually does not have her own uh, domain name website, so I just go ahead and hit enter there and it'll come up with a bunch of websites. So you can see maritzagrissom.com is available for $8.88 a year and it retails at $10.69. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and add that to our cart. Okay, and we will go ahead and view our cart. All right, uh, let's check through things. How long do we want to uh, purchase it? Uh, it's basically gonna be about the same price. You can see it kind of go, actually the one year price is a little bit better. I'm gonna stick with one year. I typically just renew it uh, every year. Uh, privacy, uh, you always wanna check this uh, who is guard, especially if it's free. That kind of just protects your personal information. Um, other than that, uh, you don't really need anything else. They're, they might try and upsell you on some things, but go ahead and just click uh, confirm order. Okay. Um, so at this point, I am going to go ahead and pause it and just go ahead and log in and go through the purchase process. You can do the same thing with your own personal information. All right, so we made it through the purchase process. Uh, I basically scrolled to the bottom of the page, past my details. You can see total charge is $9. You'll see a few links here. Uh, the set up your DNS kind of walks you through what we're about to do. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do, and you can read through that if you want, uh, kind of really, like I said, walks, walks you through exactly what we're about to do. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is go to the account section, and then you'll see your newly purchased name there, in our case, maritzagrissom.com, and you'll just click on manage. Okay, so you can see, uh, make sure your whoisguard is activated, and it should be by default. And the main thing we're really gonna do here is we're gonna set up these DNS name servers, okay? So right now, they're set up as Namecheap, basic DM, DNS. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change them to custom DNS. Now let me show you uh, why we need to do this. If I go right now and I type in maritzagrissom.com, what you'll see is it'll, it'll tell you, you can see something did happen. It said the domain is registered at namecheap.com. Uh, so you can see somehow something happened, but we don't have it pointed to any kind of WordPress website yet. Um, so that's what we basically need to get taken care of right now. I, for, I forgot to actually try to type in maritzagrissom.com before we purchased the domain, but before that happened, uh, it would just kind of search 
uh, based on whatever um, service provider you had or it would just kind of do a, a basic search for it so right now there's nothing there um, so I'll go ahead and close that and what we need to do now is we actually need to create a hosting plan okay so the 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 name the domain name that we purchased right here is uh, essentially what gives us that nice address that we can tell people but now what we need to do is we need to go purchase some server space where we can actually um, host our particular website and hosting just means uh, to put our files up somewhere uh, that they can be accessed okay so uh, what we need to do is uh, go to uh, so so where are we kind of backing up we're now on step two purchase a hosting plan okay I'm gonna do it from this uh, site ground but you can do it from a number of places Bluehost GoDaddy HostGator many of these are actually cheaper than the one that I use uh, but I really like this one it's it's performed for me very well you can kind of get an idea uh, of the different options usually when you you go to a website like SiteGround or even GoDaddy usually the first cheapest one will just have the capability to do one website uh, I typically um, uh, go for the the option that allows you to do multiple websites uh, there's a number of other features but for this uh, tutorial we won't really dive down into those okay so again I'm already logged in so you can go ahead and, and purchase something like SiteGround I would I would recommend the grow big unless you really do just want one website then startup is probably fine for you and you can upgrade at any time um, but uh, like I said here I'm already logged in you can see up in the corner um, now again this is for SiteGround but but most of these are pretty similar once you kinda get inside uh, so I'm gonna jump over to my accounts and you'll kind of see some of the, the sites that I already have on, on my particular account. You can see technically social.io down there. Um, almost all of these different web hosting uh, sites have something called cPanel. It kind of stands for control panel. So I'm going to click go to cPanel. So like I said, even though you may have a different uh, hosting site like GoDaddy or something like that, almost all of them or at least a lot of them will use this control panel or maybe one other alternative. Um, so what we first need to do is, uh, and this, this information will be relative in just a few minutes, but what I first need to do is I actually need to create this concept of having, um, of having Maritza Grissom on my actual hosting uh, page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click an add-on domain. Now if you're doing this from scratch and you just created the hosting account, it'll kind of walk you through and allow you to, uh, usually a lot of times they'll even allow you to purchase a, a domain through your, like as you're purchasing a hosting site. Uh, but if you already have uh, something set up and typically you're gonna have to do something like this, add a domain name or uh, add on domain. So this is the point where I would say basically uh, maritzagrissom.com, whatever I actually purchased, okay. And beyond that, I don't really need to do anything. It kind of sets it up for me. I can generate a password there. So just something kind of uh, crazy. This is just for the back and this isn't what you're actually going to uh, use to log into your website. So um, usually just kind of set that up and then I click add domain. Okay, so now that that's there, you can eventually uh, scroll down and we can see maritzagrissom.com. Okay, so this is now a website. If I go to maritzagrissom.com, still don't get anything, right? Because I have these two different uh, pieces. I have this domain name that I purchased, maritzagrissom.com, and this is kind of the official. When I type in maritzagrissom.com, it's coming through this name cheap uh, platform, so to speak. That's kind of a generalization. Uh, it's not technically correct, but uh, for our kind of explanation purposes, it works. And then I have on my SiteGround host, uh, hosting site, I have something called maritzagrissom.com. We basically need to connect them to one another. Okay, so how do I do that? I'm gonna go back to my control panel home. Somewhere in your hosting plan, you will see these name servers. Okay, so this is basically the, the magic number that I need. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this name server and I'm gonna go back to my name cheap and this is where I select custom DNS and you can see it gives you name server one and name server two. Okay, so I'm literally just gonna copy those two pieces in and this is what connects, right? So now when I type in uh, maritzagrissom.com, what will happen is it'll come through Namecheap, so to speak, and then Namecheap will look and say, well, hey, where is this website? Where does it actually exist out on the internet? Okay, so. Uh, it'll basically say, hey, it exists at this kind of random place right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. 
All right, so those are now saved in there. Um, please allow 85 seconds before switching your name servers again. Okay, they'll basically tell you sometimes it takes up to 48 hours, 72 hours to, to update. In my experience, it's, it's almost always been instant. Now, I actually don't have anything waiting for me at the other place, so there's still kind of nothing there right now. Okay. Also, the other thing is that sometimes you can get this stuff in your history. Uh, but before we really give this a good try, what I, I now need to do is I actually need to create a website um, on my hosting service. Okay, and this is where I, I do the WordPress part. So again, right now I, I've created this concept on my server that there's going to be a MaritzaGrissom.com, but I need to actually create a website there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, and again, this is nice and cPanel. Uh, in the control panel, they always have these kind of auto installers. So your control panel should have some kind of WordPress installer. So we're simply going to click on that, okay? And you'll basically see some things right here. I'm just gonna click install now. And it allows me to choose one of my options. So uh, we just do HTTP. I don't have a, any um, secure SSL certificate installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and find my uh, Maritza Grissom should be somewhere in here. I have a lot of websites here, so you probably see it before me. Um, I see Maritza Grissom. I think I may, ah, oh, there it is, maritzagrissom.com. Perfect, okay. So everything else we can pretty much leave the same. I'll just uh, type something up here, Maritza Grissom, my new blog, whatever, right? So this is just what's gonna pop up basically up, up here at the top. Okay, so the rest of this stuff, uh, we can basically just kinda, I'm just gonna copy and paste these. Um, this is my admin account, okay? So I'm just gonna actually change this to admin just for simplicity for right now, for this demo. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and just make a simple password. Now I would never recommend doing this uh, but I'll just set it up to password, okay? And then some email address, so um, we'll just do hello at technicallysocial.io. Okay, so some email address that, that you can actually access. This is how you can reset your password if you want. Okay, so beyond that, I can basically just kind of zip through these things. If you know a little bit more, you can kind of mess with this, but we're just gonna click install. Oh, it doesn't let me, okay? So password, let's make it stronger how about one two three there we go so password one two three uh, is good enough apparently okay so it says it may take three or four minutes so i'll go ahead and pause this while we finish the install all right and we're done so you can see it kind of gives me the link that i can click on maritzagrissom.com um, so i'm going to go ahead and click on that and we'll see what happens and it still takes me here um, but what I want to do now is I want to actually um, actually show you if I open up a new browser and let's try typing that same thing in maritzagrissom.com, you actually see the site is up. And I, I intentionally wanted to show you that. Uh, you can see Maritza Grissom, uh, my new blog. Because like I mentioned earlier, this page is kind of in my history in it right now. So let me actually go ahead and I'll kind of just delete my, all my history. So nothing's stored in there again. Now I'll try and run this again, and hopefully this time, well, looks like Chrome is a little bit behind the game for right now. So, so Chrome will have to catch up. I still have something not quite connecting in there, but let's go ahead and actually jump to a new browser, and we can uh, now, since this, uh, Edge seems to be uh, getting the website. If I want to log in, and the last thing I want to do here, uh, so let's actually kind of go back to where we started. Um, so we, we just took care of this, connect your domain name to hosting plan server. Okay, so uh, we also did install WordPress on your hosting plan server, and as you saw, it was not that complex. The last thing we want to do is purchase and install a theme to enable drag and drop editing on your website. Okay, so. We're gonna do that through um, Elegant Themes. So Elegant Themes is one of the best uh, WordPress builders out there. I've used it for several years and actually have a lifetime membership. Highly recommend it. There's a number of other great plugins that come with it, but the main thing is this DB plugin. 
So I actually am already logged in here. Hopefully, I just cleared out my history. So how does this work? Okay, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, come to their kind of back-end um, registered users, and I'm going to download DB. Okay, okay, so I actually did log out. So let me go ahead and I'm sorry, let me go ahead and re-log back in. All right, we're back in, so I'm going to go ahead and try this uh, download again. And you can see it will download this zip file, um, dvzip 8.6 megabytes. All right, so the last step we're going to do, let's go ahead and see one more time if this works out for us. And uh, still not working for some reason. Um, but like I said, it is up there. We can see it very clearly. Um, so the, the last thing I want to do is I want to actually log into this website. So I can say wp-admin, stands for WordPress admin. And I'm going to type in my username and password. So admin and then password123. So in case you don't believe me, password123. So we'll go ahead and log in. All right, and so you can see some of the settings uh, back here. And WordPress uh, we can go through these in another tutorial but for now uh, we're just gonna go ahead and finish up this uh, tutorial so how do I install this awesome new theme that I just purchased through elegant themes I simply go over to let's see uh, it's been a while since I've done this appearance and then themes and you can see it has this 2017 theme and I'm simply gonna add a new theme okay I can literally just click add um, and at this point, oh, no, it's actually going to try to uh, search. I can actually upload a theme from the ones I downloaded. So I'm just going to click browse. And then I think if I just go to my desktop, you should hopefully see uh, dv.zip. There it is. So install now. And we will wait just a second. Perfect. So now we just go ahead and activate it. So DB is now activated. If I go to the theme, so now I can actually click here and I can go to my homepage. And again, this is maritzagrissom.com. Same page, it just looks a lot different. It just looks like a blog right now. Uh, but what's really nice is I can actually uh, edit this uh, and I can use the DB theme. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, definitely, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It took longer than five minutes, it took about 15 minutes. Uh, but as you can see from this tutorial, uh, getting WordPress up and running, it takes a few minutes of work, but not bad at all. You can probably, even with uh, registering all these new accounts, should be able to get um, all this set up in less than a half an hour. Uh, all right, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day, thanks.